guys, welcome back. I switched the painting out in the backdrop and it really, really changes the whole vibe, doesn't it? This is one that I've been working on the last few days or so. It's definitely a um, more bright and contrasty mood than the other one. Anyway, guys, I did the best job that I could washing my hands. Some of this just is not gonna come off today and hopefully it doesn't come off on my face. <laughs> And we're going to be taking a wild departure from the way that I look right now, and we're going to be playing with some new luxury beauty. That's right, you can arrive at a luxury face of makeup looking any way you want. <laughs> Today we're going to be playing with these. I mean, there are other things too, but this definitely led me down this path. So, uh, the Waterfresh Complexion Touch from Chanel. You guys made me aware of the existence of this, and I was like, okay, well, what's the difference between this and the Waterfresh Tint? we will discuss. I also took that as an opportunity to pick up the Waterfresh blush. I happened to get intense coral. A lot of thoughts here. <laughs> a lot of thoughts. I have no idea really whether or not this face of makeup is actually going to come together. So I also picked up a bunch of stuff from Victoria Beckham Beauty. If I were, like I think that sometimes it's helpful for me to tell you guys whether it's something I'm buying like for my channel or whether it's something that I would own whether I was a YouTuber or not. And I think that one of my vices, were I not a YouTuber, it would still be Victoria Beckham Beauty because everything about it start to finish is just such a pleasure. I love interacting with the packaging. I love her choices of colors lately. The initial releases I was like a little tepid on, but as the brand has matured, Mm, she's been chasing all the feelings I would have chased. So I picked up Starlight. It's not quite what I expected. We'll get into it. I also got Fizz, I think is what it's called. Yeah, in the uh, Posh Gloss, which mm, I love Posh Gloss. This one's very pigmented. It's very, very pretty. And I picked up, one of you guys tagged me in this, so thank you, the new Cheeky Posh in Fame. Yes, that is quite a vibe and it also goes really really nicely like these two are quite a vibe anyway <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and jump into trying to make something really pretty and healthy looking happen on my face right now because it's a lot of things but healthy looking it is not here we have the Le Beige water fresh complexion touch now both of these are part of their water fresh vibe where it's these micro encapsulation formulas they're supposed to have kind of a cooling sensation on the skin basically the pigment is suspended in this like skincare serum and you have to mix it together either on your face or before you put it on your face and it comes with the doofiest little brush where did that thing go all right i can't find the doofy little brush if that gives you any indication of how i feel about it <laughs> It's about yay big and it's kind of dome shaped and I have no I have no idea what they thought I was going to do with that thing, but it ain't it. But it's not like it's some kind of add-on item that you would pay for. It's just in the box. So it's not even a cautionary tale. It's just a doofy little brush. That is always the thing with these luxury brands is that they think that they need to throw you a bone by like putting the applicator in there with it. And I'm like, we were prepared to pay a crazy price. You didn't need to put a little reusable Q-tip in there for, for me to apply my makeup with. I'm fine. So I went ahead and got out the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint to compare for you guys. Now these are two different shades. I have the uh, Water Fresh Tint in <laughs> light. <laughs> so yeah, completely different shade system because this is in B10, which is what I have in the Chanel, number one day Chanel revitalizing, the Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. It takes so long to find the English name for these on the bottle. That's why I always am fumbling when I'm like naming them. They have long titles and it's not even on here. Like you would have to suffer through me trying to pronounce French and that's just not a pretty picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch both of these and show you the differences. Well, first of all, the, the Water Fresh Tint seems to be a lot more water. Like this is the Water Fresh Tint and it's just like wet to the touch. It's a lot of water. And this is still like that, but it does have a touch more pigment and the pigment like the uh, balls, <laughs> the bubbles in there are bigger and it looks different. But other than that, the main thing I notice is that the original Water Fresh Tint has a scent, and you guys know I do really like the Chanel scent, and the new one doesn't. It's unscented, it's kind of weird. Like after all that 
jabbering on my part of, you know, going off on how I'm like, well, I don't usually like fragrances, but the Chanel fragrance is the exception because it's just so luxurious and so pleasant and I really feel like it adds to the experience and then they just didn't put it in this one, so there you go. Now, one thing that I found with these kinds of formulas, that being the Chanel ones and also the Rose Ink, her new tent, her new-ish tent that does the same thing, is that you really are better off kind of mixing it on your hand first or on a palette or something first before you put it on. Otherwise you're going to end up like rubbing your face so much that it'll start to pick up your like skincare and stuff. And I've got quite a lot of skincare on right now. So I'm just gonna take a brush here. I honestly guys, I mean, it's supposed to be more coverage and like, yeah, it, it's a little bit more coverage. A little bit but it's not like I thought it was gonna be like a foundation you know and I really really like the way that it goes on but I have not liked the way that it has worn it really doesn't cooperate with many things so I you know try to use my typical like setting sprays or my skincare things like that and maybe it's just that this is so packed with skincare I'm just doing one half so I can show you guys the coverage level Maybe it's so packed with skincare that like, I don't need to do that. Because when I do my regular routine, I find that this has like zero wear time and it starts to break up and look really, really icky and like feel heavy. Other than that, I mean, it's very, it's very, very pretty. It, honestly, it reminds me a lot. Let's actually do the regular Waterfresh tint on the other side of my face, just so that we can see the difference here. I think that that would be probably the most valuable thing. Yeah, it's gonna be, I think quite a bit less coverage. It is. It really just feels like skincare. Oh, but the smell is so nice. I'm like in the, you know, 0.1% of the population that's just like, yes, give me more fragrance, but only when it comes to Chanel. It's just nice. I also like never even think about something like a vanilla scent in a lip gloss or something like that. I'm always just like, oh, it's a lip gloss because, you know, I grew up in the Bonnie Bell generation. That's noticeable. That's definitely noticeable. So the complexion touch is quite noticeably more coverage than the Water Fresh 10. And that makes sense. So this is much more of a makeup. This is much more of just like a, you know, a texture on the skin, a slightly tinted skincare skin tint type thing, so. But I do think that the Water First Tint has a better dry down. It behaves more like makeup. This just kind of like stays a little bit like, I don't know, it just doesn't really completely set down. It's like, it's like they took the original formula and they just packed too much pigment into it and it's not stabilized properly. Like that's how it feels to me. I personally like the look of the complexion touch better than the water fresh tint but the water fresh tint is already setting down i can feel it it's really nice <laughs> like it just feels really secure and this just kind of always feels a little bit molten to me which is like one of my biggest pet peeves 0.7 fluid ounces for 65 dollars i think this is the same price and it is a full ounce do with that information what you will now, uh, I'm going to do this next, not because I would typically put blush on right after I put my foundation on, but because this has the potential to ruin everything and I don't, I, I want to make as little disruption as possible. The more layers I put on, the more there is to screw up by putting this on top of it, is my point. So, if that starts to, again, give away my feelings on the Le Beige Water Fresh Blush, kind of wondered why, I mean, I'm not necessarily like finger on the pulse in the luxury beauty community, but at the same time, like I haven't heard fanfare or anything about this. And I kind of thought it was going to be something revolutionary as far as like, you know, people really liking the complexion formula of it. But I ended up getting the shade uh, Intense Coral because it was the only shade that they had. And here's the thing. They recommend applying it with a brush. And when you do that, it kind of lays the product down and then it pushes it around and it picks it back up. So I also have found that this is especially obnoxious when it comes to kind of going ahead and mixing it before you get it onto your skin because it's like an intense pigment, but it's not very evenly distributed because of 
the nature of the formula being micro encapsulated. And so it being another layer on top of what, what you're already wearing in most cases, I don't think that that formula lends itself that well to a, a blush. See, look, look at how it goes on my sponge. It's splotchy because of the, the pigment being weirdly distributed. So it's actually like really hard. It's really, really hard to get this on evenly. And as you start to kind of try and do what you would do with like a cloud paint or something and get it to evenly distribute by just kind of tapping it, you're picking up more product. And if you were to go in with more product on your sponge, it just picks itself up and picks the foundation up. And God help you if you use a brush and you accidentally buff. Like you just kind of think, oh, I can buff this on with a brush. Do not buff. It will pick up everything in its wig. Plus, I'm, I'm, this is not my color. <laughs> this is like Kate the Great's color. That lovely peachy coral. It just is not something supernaturally occurring in my skin. And like while I can make it work, it's not the easiest. And it's gonna be interesting to try and shoehorn it into a makeup look with all of those kind of like cool lilac-y purples from Victoria Beckham. So that's it up close. I highly recommend using a sponge with this. If you use a brush with it like they actually have in their directions, it will just pick itself up and move everything around. Like that was the best the best application I've ever gotten of it. And I've used it probably five or six times just trying to get a really good understanding of the weight of the product and also the amount of pigment in the product. But it's still a lot, you know? And it doesn't look very natural, but that's, that's mainly the color. I also like that I was looking for instructions on the Waterfresh Complexion Touch. I feel like, can I have the instructions? And they're like, um, this is Chanel. And you go, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> may I have the instructions? <laughs> there are no instructions. They just think that because it's Chanel, they don't need to have instructions. You should know already. So let's do a little bit of concealer. That was exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to use my Kosa's concealer here in 1.5C. I haven't pulled this out in a while, but it's really, really lightweight. It has a little bit more of the same finish as both of those complexion products where it's really hydrating, but it has a little bit more of its own mattification on dry down, so. And this is the Rare Beauty foundation brush. The other thing that I find with these formulas that's kind of a deal breaker for me is how easily they sweat off because they're water-based. <laughs> so, you know, you think this is gonna be such a great summertime product because it's so lightweight and we all think about beautiful summer skin showing through our skin tints when we think about summertime, right? But, you know, I'm doing my yoga in this and granted, most makeup is not going to survive. I don't expect it to look immaculate when I'm done doing yoga, but I find that I'm not just sweating, I'm sweating makeup. <laughs> I like see it drip onto my mat and it's makeup water. And I'm like, that's, mm, that's weird. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. So yeah, I just, you know, I like to know that I can count on something. And if you are planning on getting something like this cause you want to wear it to like an outdoor event or you plan on being outdoors at all. And like you sweat sometimes, you know, like a human. My experience has suggested that it's not necessarily the best option for that. And it does have silicones in it, I think. I think that you have to in order to have that micro encapsulation. I'm not a formulation expert. I forgot how good that freaking concealer is. Wow. I haven't had the luxury of that much coverage in that little effort in a long time. Gosh darn it. That's really nice. And that was 1.5C. It is a better complexion match for me than one, which is what I had been using. <laughs> that looks really nice. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and do the Victoria Beckham blush because I want you guys to see it. If I put bronzer on next, you're not gonna see it. So I'm actually just gonna use this like kind of on the higher points, which to be fair, doesn't really make sense because that was so, the coral was so warm and this is a little cooler. This is a very, very pretty violet lilac. But if I were to actually mix that color, sure, it has a lot of blue in it, but as it relates to a lot of pinks and purples, it is quite red. So I think it will actually make a really nice 
pop. I think we'll be able to get away with it, I guess. And I'm trying to bring back <laughs> the color of my lips, both on my cheeks and, well, on my lips too, because I got makeup mouth. Anyway, uh, yeah, this started, you know, obviously with that cute little VB that is impressed in the top usually, but I've been um, having myself a, a grand old time applying this lately. It is quite pigmented. And so I'm going to go ahead and work it onto the brush in a way that disperses it evenly on the brush first. I'm not going to do this number because I just, eh, there's so many layers of things. I just kind of want to tap this. All right. Kind of looks like that. Doesn't look all that evenly distributed, but here we go. Going for that lifted blush look and everything turns pink on me. Do not, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. Plus it's going on top of that coral, which maybe it'll just kind of cancel out some of the orange in that coral. Yeah, I need bronzer, but like what a pretty color. What a pretty color. It's very similar to that color on my lips. The color of my lips. I do feel the complexion touch, the newer one, setting down a little bit, which is nice. It's just a little slower. Like you almost feel a really, really secure dry down with the Water Fresh tint. Is that, that is just, I think that that is so pretty. Ooh, so pretty. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, I'm gonna go in with the NARS bronzer, the Laguna bronzer here. And just gonna use that kind of to bring this together. <laughs> it's, it's, while it's a naturally occurring color in my skin, it's not necessarily a naturally occurring color on my cheeks. It's a little bit bruisey. So I just wanna like warm it up a little bit on the backs of my cheeks so that it looks a little bit more intentional. And I'm talking, I mean, we are just using so little here. I'm just. Barely tapping it in there, barely tapping it kind of on the back of my cheeks. But all of these cream products are pretty dry. Well, not, not the Water Fresh blush. <laughs> There's nothing dry about this. It's so, it's so damp. You know, this is dry. The Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh is very dry, which that was probably one of the biggest misgivings I had initially with that product and with that formula was I was like, I can't get it to go on evenly without picking itself back up because it's so dry. It's like it doesn't want to buff in, but you have to like just get it on the brush and not buff it. Like treat it almost like a powder, which is what I've gotten used to recently working with things like the Rare Beauty bronzer stick. A lot of these bronzers actually that are like less cream and more cream to powder. That's, it can be disconcerting about this stick. It's just a lot less creamy than you think it's gonna be, but it also results in a really beautiful hybrid finish on the skin instead of being sticky. So it, it wasn't worth it for me to put up with that with the previous shades because I was very unimpressed with them. But this shade is so pretty. That's why I, you know, decided to buy it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it one more shot. And I'm really glad that I did because this shade is so beautiful. Yeah, and I think that like at this point I own like all of the products that come in this particular shade. Like this is a very Victoria Beckham shade. Okay, next things next. We're gonna move into Starlight here. Starlight, okay. Online, and maybe I will look at it again and change my mind, but I was a little disappointed when I saw this because the photo of the pan online looks green. And that's just gold. In fact, let's get honey out so that I can swatch them against each other because honestly, I don't know the difference. Well, I ended up pulling, actually, it was just because they don't look different shade to shade. So I pulled my other favorites too. I ended up with tea rose, chiffon, and honey. This is honey and this is starlight. Even though this is golder and this is pinker, I'm still not seeing the green in this that I saw. Like I really thought it was going to be olive. Okay. They're fairly different on the skin, but I'm actually shocked at how like pink honey looks. There are peach honey looks by contrast. And then we also have chiffon, which is quite champagne. And then we have tea rose, which is my fave. Again, this is like right in that perfect leaning 
lilac kind of color value. E I love Tea Rose so much. Tea Rose and Chiffon together on me. Ah, we're going to go in with Starlight here. <laughs> All of those misgivings aside, I will tell you, I like it a lot. It's a beautiful color and I like how much glitz there is to it. Some of them are like more color and less shimmer. This is like foil. Starlight, Starlight. Oh, and it's gonna go with my gold jewelry too. If you've never met one of her lid lusters, they're fairly expensive. I think they're $36 before shipping. And they are really, really luxurious, creamy feeling powders. They're not creams, they are powders, but they are creamy feeling. And I have never experienced any kind of noticeable fallout with them personally. I'm just gonna take this all the way up and then I'll work on top of it. but it's super easy. I mean, so easy to work with. And maybe I'm in kind of like reckless painting mode right now where I'm like, anything can be undone, which is definitely not the case with your face. <laughs> Much more the case on a canvas when you're working with acrylics, but it layers really nicely. So you see, I've got a little more on this eyelid than on this eyelid and you can use it really sheared out or you can kind of build it and get this really intense kind of foil but it's still sophisticated. I think that that's what I like about it is that it still has that like, I don't know, not super age specific, <laughs> young is what I mean, shimmer to it. They're a little warm. <laughs> I will never understand that. It doesn't hurt, nothing burns. Right when I put them on, maybe it's just the agitation of me putting them on, but I feel like my eyelids just get a little warm <sighs> and then it goes away. So IDK. Oh, but look how smoothing. Look how gorgy porgy. I love them so much. That is like, Probably my second favorite color now. It would go tea rose and now starlight and then chiffon and then honey probably. Mm, honey, they're kind of they're kind of neck and neck. Anyway, going in with chiffon, kind of here, smear it right here, and do a little up here. It doesn't pick up as easily on a brush, but you can kind of sweet talk it. And since it has kind of like a almost like a silicone-y finish to it. It doesn't really want to have things stick on top of it all that well. But again, you can sweet talk it. So that was a little bit of chiffon. I'm gonna use tea rose to kind of bring it together. Sort of here. I don't know if that's even gonna stick, but I'll put it underneath. Just because it's that very similar purple leaning color to my eye at least. I'm just using it kind of as a smudgy outer eyeliner and then going underneath with it. I'm being quite a slob actually. But that's okay, I haven't even powdered yet, so. And that adds just this like dreamy bedroom eyes thing. My lower lash line, doesn't it? Ooh, it's almost undetectable, but like tea rose on brown eyes, forget about it. And I reckon, just to achieve a little bit of matteness, there's a method to my matteness. In the crease, I'm going to go with my friend. My friend, the Hindash palette made by my friend, the Hindash. And I'm going to just take this brush, my Angie Hot and Flashy A504, it's so T9C, I love it so much. And actually, like this shade right here, made of Match Made, goes really, really well with the kind of goldy sitch I've got going on here. I'm getting a nice lift here. Meow, meow, like that. See, nice little lifted moment. If you work with a shade that's close enough to your natural skin tone, you can be pretty sloppy with it. So the reason that, and I know I'm repeating myself, but some people probably don't know, the reason that I am always attentive to putting a mat in the crease is just because I'm more controlling the way that the light hits there, trying to maintain the illusion of like having larger eyes. Because if I'm going to do all the work 
to put all this stuff on, I want to leave it better than I found it, right? And for creating any kind of believable illusion to the eye, on the eye or anywhere, you have a harder time creating a natural looking shadow with something that is reflecting light in another way, like a shimmery shadow. Sometimes you can get away with it, but usually if something is just looking a little bit strange, you can just work on top of it with the same color, but just in a different texture, in a matte texture. And it'll add just the right amount. It's like powdering, you know what I mean? It's like powdering your under eyes or something because they're too reflective. It's the same, same logic, it's not, it's not rocket science. I tend to kind of overcomplicate things, but that's like, so pretty, right? So pretty. And I ha again, I haven't even powdered yet. So I'm just going to take my little complexion brush here and clean up a little bit just because I have such like a deep eye socket right there that like when I push a brush in to try and get that outer corner, it tends to kind of get where I don't want it and make my eye look like it's sort of drooping down. And I like it when my eye looks like it's lifting right on the edges and it's just the tiniest little touch. It can make all the difference. See? This looks a lot more intentional. And then I'll take this little guy right here. This is the BK108. I'm gonna dip that in my Kosa's powder and just selectively powder. I really don't wanna powder my whole face because I like the color that I've achieved on my cheeks. And the level of coverage is actually kind of a lot because of that Kosa's concealer. So I don't really wanna look cakey or even like super made up. I might even go with a little bit of like a powder bronzer. Ooh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't contoured. That's another thing. I was kind of waiting towards the end because it's a powder contour. I'm using my Natasha Denona contour powder in one. Makes such a subtle but wonderful difference in just believability of all the colors. Yes, I need to oil my chair. It's brand new. I didn't think I was gonna have to do that, but it's like going very annoying. We will probably add more blush because, I don't know, I think my face is eating it a little bit. I also think the foundation is eating it a little bit, but we're going to, we being me, I'm going to do my eyeliner, my mascara, and my eyebrows, and then we'll come back and do the lips and final touches, and then we'll get to talking about all the products and stuff. I'm not gonna leave you that soon. Lord knows I've got more to say. Give myself a spritz first. That is a done-ish, I guess. I'm really liking the like, you know, filled in brow look, but like for whatever reason, I have more hairs on the inside of that brow than I do on this one. And so I just end up like fussing this little spot to death, trying to get it to look real. Is that better? I think it's a little bit better. Anyway, we're gonna do lips and then we'll see if I wanna put on more blush. But again, this is Fizz and the Posh Gloss and Posh Gloss has become one of my favorite formulas of a lip gloss, like full stop. It's just a really high performing lip gloss. It comes in glass, the shades are gorgeous, and bikini is my favorite color to wear. It's so pretty, but this one's also really, really pretty. It's there. 
Like there's nothing about that that's like, and it's purple in the tube and clear on my lips. Like it's for sure there. But it just happens to be one of the few colors that I can really get away with wearing in a high saturation lip format, you know? It's one of those colors I'm really attracted to. I think we might need just a tippy touch more, but, but the way to go about that is with my other favorite <laughs> purple, weird purple kind of in-between color, and that is the Pat McGrath Flirtatious Blush. Mainly because again, I'm just trying to change the way the light is hitting a little bit. Right there where I would typically, I don't know, where most people would probably would typically highlight. I like there to be color there. And we might need just a touch more bronze. Oh, I know. How about a Makeup by Mario bronzer? These are all kind of finishing touches that I just make as I see fit. It's not necessarily like this is every single face of makeup. I do this exact same thing. It's just like sometimes you get down and you're like, I got a lot of, I got a case of pink face, you know? So I'm also going to take that same 108 brush and just kind of pull this away from my nose a little bit with my Kosas powder for the sake of proportion here. I'm like not totally sure about using this lip gloss without a lip liner. I have so many lip liners now, like every freaking company came out with one in the last like five minutes. I think that's pretty close. So this is Mega, not Maga, Mega from Ma from Kosas. Let's try it with that. Let's scratch my nose. <laughs> okay. I don't line my cupids bow because it's something that I don't really like accentuating. I think it's because it's a cool tone. I just feel like I need to overline a little bit because the cool tone tends to kind of shrink things. But it's such an agreeable formula. It's so easy to work with. I think that made a huge difference actually. Yeah, that looks more like me. You know, I just kind of like a little bit more plump appearance. And again, I think it's just the cool tone of it all was kind of making it look like it was shrinking. So, hey, okay. So I officially am loving this face of makeup with the exception of the fact that I got mascara right there. I need to clean it up. Okay, now I'm officially loving this face of makeup and we're going to chat briefly on the prices before I give you guys my final thoughts. So like I said, the Water Fresh Complexion Touch is $65 for 0.7 ounces and comes in 16 shades and I am B10. The Le Beige Water Fresh Blush comes in six shades and it is $50 for 0.5 fluid ounces. $50 is also what you pay for their bronzer that is a full ounce. So Chanel, pick a struggle. Victoria Beckham Beauty. Now there were three new shades of the posh gloss that came out in this release and they are all kind of in this like Aperol spritz aperitif theme for summer. One is called Picante, one is called Bungalow, and I bought, actually there were four, there were four, sorry, Fizz and Apertivo. So it's a light peach, a deep peachy rose, a, mm, a medium like lilac, and then a deeper berry that's a little bit warmer. So I think that there is something for everybody. It really looks at different skin tones in terms of like depth and richness of pigment, but also undertone in that there are ones that are really, really beautifully like warm and saturated in peach. And then there are ones that are very like, you know, cool and moody. So I think that's a lovely addition. Again, those are $28. The Lid Luster Crystal Infused Eyeshadow are $36. There were three new ones that have come out recently. It wasn't one big push like it was with the lips. So Starlight, I maintain, looks green online <laughs> and uh, then chiffon and the one that I didn't get re recently. I don't have all of them, but uh, I didn't get mirror because mirror is like pure silver, which is not my shade. <laughs> it doesn't look right on me, but man, doesn't starlight flatter brown eyes. It really pulls any like naturally occurring gold that I might have in my actual brown of my eyes. It really, really accentuates that. I just think that that is 
a dialed in shade, even though it's not green like I wanted it to be. Okay, and then the Cheeky Posh is $42. There were two shades that came out with this latest push, but there are seven total. So it was Fame, the one that I got, and then Fever, which is like a bright neon coral, which I'm sure excites a lot of people, but that is not my shade. In fact, I, you know, that shade really like appetizes me from the standpoint of just colors I like, but I cannot wear it. I cannot wear it, maybe in clothes, but I cannot wear it on my face. So I'm ready to go ahead and share my final thoughts with you guys as far as like whether I think these are worth it, whether I would buy them again, basically. Starting at the beginning, I think I was perfectly fine with my water fresh tint. In fact, the rose ink is actually less expensive, also does not have a fragrance and has more shades than this one, than the original water fresh tint. But they're very, 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 very like almost imperceptibly similar other than that. In fact, I tried to do a side by side video and I scrapped it because there was nothing to look at. Now, this actually did show a pretty strong contrast side to side, which surprised even me because they both feel really, really like just light coverage. But the Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch, as you can see, it's, it's nice. It's looking a little sludgy. Let me turn that light down so you can see kind of in my more porous area. Not, I mean, obviously all of your skin is porous, but you know, where you can see my pores. I had a, an injection there one time to treat like this really, really large thing that wouldn't go away. And it enlarged those pores kind of permanently. And you can see right there, it's just looking a little bit mucky, sludge, sludgy, cakey. I feel like it's too much pigment for the, the balance and the harmony of the formula. It just isn't working. It's not helping anything. Like if it's gonna have less coverage, I just want it to make the texture look really good. And it's kind of not doing either one of those. Whereas, you know, the original Water Fresh tint, it's not really overreaching the potential of what the formula was designed to do, which is be really, really thin and lightweight and like skincare. I feel like something is just wrong with trying to put this much pigment into that suspension. It just doesn't work. It's uncomfortable and it's hard to, it's kind of hard to work with. And if you are a fan of the Chanel scent like I am, you don't get it in this formula and that annoys me. And next we have the Water Fresh Blush. While I was able to make this work today, in the past, I have not been able to make it work. It really, really, not only frustrated me, but kind of scared me at first where I was like, oh boy, is this gonna be like a total, like I spent my money on this. Sure, it's valuable information to know if something's not good, but at the same time, like, is it horrible? <laughs> is it, hor am I about to have to tell people this is horrible? It's not horrible, it's finicky, it's hard to work with, and it is not greater than the sum of its parts. And it's certainly not worth the $50 price tag. You know, I think Chanel does really, really beautiful things, really, really innovative formulas, but yet again, we've got a dud on the blushes. They did those really weird cheek sticks too that I ended up decluttering. They were really hard to work with and really, really not pretty on the skin. And this is just like the total other end of the spectrum in terms of formulation. And I still don't really like it. Can we try somewhere in the middle of the spectrum in terms of formulation on blush Chanel? Just a thought, but yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't recommend either one, either one of these, unfortunately, but that just saved you $115. So you're welcome. Now, if I'm being honest about Victoria Beckham beauty, like I said, it's hard for me to be unbiased. I really feel like it's a brand that I would probably own almost all of the same way that I do now, even if I weren't on YouTube. It's probably one that I would deeply invest in because I just like her formula so much and I love how her makeup makes me feel. It's just pretty on my skin and the colors are really awesome and I get excited about her releases. I think her releases are thoughtful. I think her colors are thoughtful. I think that the amount of makeup and the amount of releases that she has stay exciting without being overwhelming. There's just something about it that respects my attention span and the products, the performance of them really speaks for itself. It's a beautiful experience from start to finish. All the way from the beginning of, you know, her absolutely gorgeous kind of like horn printed packaging, kind of tortoise shell to the glass that everything else is in. And then the performance of the products is lovely. If her mascara came in a brown, I don't know if I would be able to resist. It would be just as good as the Thrive, except the pack, 
packaging is so darn pleasing. Mm. Anyway, that's how my mind works. Kind of stupid, but anyway, I was predisposed to like these because I already like these formulas and these are already shades that I knew I was going to like. The only thing that I would caution you against is the fact that Starlight, I'm holding T-Rose, Starlight is not green. It's just a very nice gold. It's just a true gold that's not orange. It's a nice neutral gold that's not champagne and it's not pink. It's just gold. And if you are, like me, a fan of her funky purple, pink, lilac, rosy kind of colors, these deliver. They deliver on the promise. And I'm, you know, just as impressed, if not more impressed than I thought I was going to be. And I get excited to use these every single time because they make me look beautiful. They make me feel beautiful. My eyes just look really, really pretty. It looks like I tried a lot harder than taking my finger, which is covered in acrylic paint and India ink, and smearing something all over my eyeball. And yet here we are. It looks great. So yeah, I really just can't say enough ab about it. it. Like if you have the same taste that I do in formulas and also a passion for interacting with like really, really lovely packaging. If that doesn't matter to you. That's a lot of what you're paying for. If that doesn't matter to you, then then don't do it. But if you really like that, that treat, you know, of, of using a product, her stuff really, really delivers on the fantasy. And all in all, with my squeaky chair, I just really, really dig the way that this looks. This is like my ideal, this is my ideal coverage level even though I don't feel like the Chanel is the best way to accomplish it. There are so many skin tints out there that have a very similar coverage level. This is about the same coverage level as my Laura Mercier. It's a very light tint and moisturizer light revealer. This is what I would probably prefer to the Chanel Water Fresh tint. But as far as the actual, like this one, I mean, honestly, the sh number one day Chanel. The revitalizing foundation is pretty similar to this. And also something like this, the, I mean, I'm not gonna name all of them that have this like medium coverage level, but the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer is very similar to it. All I'm trying to say is it is a wash. It is at sea among competitors and you do not need to go and pay $65 for it from Chanel when it really doesn't deliver the Chanel experience. As far as I'm concerned, you can go and get it for half that or even less. So. I will link my, uh, my skin tint video down below. It's probably getting a little bit outdated just in the sense of how many things have been coming out lately, but nonetheless, it, there's a spreadsheet and it's pretty helpful. So yeah, I hope that this was helpful for you guys to see kind of up close and personal, HD, what have you. And if it was, if you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.